Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Recently in an article I wrote for Commander's Herald, sister site of EDHREC, I talk about interaction in Commander, but not the kind that you're thinking about. It's a meme at this point to play more removal, but interaction is more than removal. Interaction is how we as players interact with the board and with the game state, and as I posit in my article, how we interact with each other. It's a different concept and one that we may not think about that often. How engaged are you with the game when you aren't the active player? If it's not your turn, are you on your phone or getting snacks or checked out of what's going on? What if you had people engaged on everyone's turns? As much as I dislike the cards in general, Ristic Study and Smothering Tithe keep people engaged with what others are doing because it benefits them to do so. A classic example of getting people engaged is fact or fiction. I've never seen an instance of fact or fiction where the entire table doesn't mull over the piles and make decisions or have their input on what to do. That turns Commander from four people taking separate turns into an experience that pulls everyone in. And personally, I like that concept. What if we could have everyone engaged, making choices, voting, bargaining on other people's turns? Let's look at some of the cards that do these three things. First are choices. Council's Judgment, with each player picking a permanent to exile and choosing to tie the vote or exile a single permanent, is a great example. You cast this and now everyone's assessing the threats, adding their input, and casting their votes. How about Tempting Contract? Giving opponents the choice to make treasures, making you just as many treasures in the process? That's a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of agreement. And introducing the monarch into the game invites choices too. If someone plays a court of ambition, everyone then needs to choose how to get the monarch away from that player to prevent bigger downsides from plaguing the rest of the table. Then there's voting. Rule enforced politicking, like on the new Tivit Seller of Secrets. I did a tune up of this Sphinx's precon, linked up top, where I warp the whole deck to care about voting, especially with your thumb on the scale. Expropriate is a big example of this that some players might be very, very familiar with. A damned if you do, damned if you don't vote that sees the punishments be big or bigger, but at least you get to choose your own fate. And Coercive Portal is important here too. Do we vote to destroy the world, or do we give the portal's controller an extra card? Do we set ourselves back to ensure the portal's owner doesn't get too far ahead? Lastly is Bargaining. I love this one because there's so much that can go on at the table that isn't necessarily enforced by the rules. If I don't destroy your creature, you won't attack me with it, right? Or if I let you live another turn, you'll take the other players out? This is using cards like Marching Duo Drone. Asking the table, who doesn't mind taking two damage so that we can all get a treasure? It's a simple request, but it's still getting people thinking and getting people involved when it's not their own turns. Orzhov Advocate and Noble Heritage are great examples as well. Do you want to take two plus one plus one counters if it means you can't attack me until your next turn? Think carefully because I get those same benefits. And one of the most recent commanders added here is Glunch the Bestower. On the surface, this green and white jellyfish feels very group huggy. You get one of the benefits of two plus one plus one counters, an extra card, or two treasures, but you have to give opponents the other unchosen effects. So why not let them tell you what they want or deserve in those benefits? Get them talking. See what kind of info you can pry from them in exchange for your gifts. Or see what kind of compromises they'll make to get those precious effects. And this led me to really think about a deck led by Glunch in my least favorite color combo of green and white. How can I take these benefits and turn them in my favor? How can I build a political deck that people may think is group huggy, but I can prove them wrong? How can I take this symmetrical benefit and crank it up in my favor? First, let's take a look at Glunch. This 3 mana jellyfish, a flump for those D&D savvy, is a 0-5 flyer, which on its own is a big squishy defensive body. At the beginning of your end step, meaning you do get to do this on the turn you cast him, you choose three different players. One gets to put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control, the other gets two treasures, and the third gets to draw a card. You only get one of these benefits, sure, but what can you wring from your opponents to get them to be not the one left out? While many may balk at giving your opponents any kind of advantage, there's a lot that you can do here to make this effect extraordinarily lopsided. Let's start with the counters. 
You can easily turn two counters into three counters with Hardened Scales, Lazel, or Conclave Mentor. That immediately shifts the balance a bit. How about effects like Generous Patron, which draws you cards when an effect you control puts counters on opponent's creatures. That immediately turns this in your favor significantly. Or a Nils Discipline Enforcer. You can encourage opponents to put counters on creatures you don't want attacking you thanks to Nils Pillow Fort style effect. And the card draw ability is minor at best, but a single card can make the difference for an opponent that's empty handed and win you a lot of favor. Even better if you've married your opponent with a wedding ring. That way you both get to share in the spoils, a card for them and a card for you. And the treasures. The treasures are the most exploitable choice here. You can give yourself two treasures and do so much with them. Like my favorite academy manufacturer, being able to make two treasures, two food, and two clues each turn far outweighs giving your opponents the other options. Or you could be doubling those tokens with a parallel lives or anointed procession. Four treasures is a massive ramp each turn that no opponent can keep pace with. And of course there's doubling season, working to double treasures or those plus one plus one counters in a best of any scenario plan and sending the value you get through the roof. I've talked at length about group hug before, check out one such example linked up top. And taking that concept from a pure benevolence to tainted gifts is, in my opinion, the best path to take with it. I think Glunch does this better than most. There are also scenarios where you can choose a player without creatures to put counters on the nothing they control, or give treasures to a player who already has more mana than they need, or more cards to a player that's been drawing a ton. Abundance is opportunity, and diminishes the impact of what is normally perceived as a benefit. Glunch's gifts come with warnings attached. Now let's take this concept, getting players involved, making choices and bargains, and expand that to a full deck build. What do we pack into a deck that makes opponents pay attention and want to be our best friends? Let's start with introducing mechanics to the game that get people involved. The Monarch and the new initiative from Battle for Baldur's Gate. These get people thinking about who to attack, or what benefit they can get from engaging with the board, be that with you or with other opponents. Including Dawnglade Regent and White Plume Adventurer, to name just two, gets people thinking about attacking for fun and profit even when it's not their turn, paying attention to where these benefits are centralized. Now let's think about cards that make opponents choose. I mentioned Tempting Contract, Noble Heritage, and Orzov Advocate already, so they're in the deck. They get people thinking if they take advantage now in exchange for you being safe or getting the advantage threefold. Some people will snap them up, but others may not. Master of Ceremonies gets people thinking too. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent chooses to get a 1-1 creature, an extra card, or a treasure, but you get all of the chosen options. Again, a small benefit for them, but a big benefit for you. Split the Spoils, along the same lines of fact or fiction, gets opponents making choices too. What do the piles look like, and what does the player casting it really want back? Get the whole table involved talking about choices and options and getting engaged. Then there are the choices you make, but can allow your opponents to sway you and curry favor. Skullwinder, for instance, is a great example, asking the table who wants something back from their graveyards, and seeing who jumps at the opportunity, and seeing what people are willing to do for you for that opportunity is an excellent dance puppets moment for any player. Peer's Whim and any of the friend or foe cards are great here too. Asking people if we're friends or not, and making them prove it, is a political tool that can spare you from someone's wrath further down the line. Dawnbreak Reclaimer is another example where you can ask who wants a creature back, knowing full well you can get exactly what you want back from your graveyard while opponents scramble to convince you of their wants and needs. I've also included a what's yours is mine element to the deck too. Mangara the Diplomat drawing you cards whenever opponents cast multiple spells in a turn, Wandering Archaic getting you copies of their instants and sorceries, and Esper Sentinel drawing you cards when they cast their first non-creature spell each turn. Let them use those resources you've given them, but you'll get just as good as you've given. Sometimes the generosity of giving isn't its own reward. Sometimes a reward is its own reward. <laughs> 
There are other cards that I've included that ensures people have no good choices either, getting them involved in choosing their own demises. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk makes them choose from among their permanents and sacrifice the rest. Druid of Purification makes them choose permanents owned by each other to destroy, and Barroom Brawl makes them choose what creatures punch which other creatures in a massive knockdown drag out fight. Whatever they are, think about cards you include in your decks and how they get your opponents involved in the game. After all, this is a social format, so only ever being involved with each other when it comes to attacks and blocks is boring. Get people talking, having fun, and really looking at what's going on in the game. Let me know what you think about this list linked below. Check it out by going to my sponsor, Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world and made it easy for me to look for cards that mentioned choose or each opponent may while I was building this deck and helps me organize my many, many deck lists. Go check them out and while you're there, be sure to follow my Moxfield profile. So what do you think about this style of deck? It's not quite group hug, but it's not without gifts to be given to opponents either. Let me know in the comments and look forward to seeing me play this deck on stream all month as well. And of course folks, as always, good luck and have fun.